Hey there, Touch Center programmers, Matthew here. So, finally, at long last, we're going to have an opportunity to catch up with some of the um, work that happened at a noise workshop that we did here in San Francisco, hosted by Obscura Digital. Thank you very much, Obscura. Um, I finally have an opportunity to share some of the things that we did in that workshop. Uh, and what we're going to look at specifically is how we can use noise in some interesting and fun ways here inside of Touch. Um, and this is kind of more thoughts about how we can use noise kind of procedurally uh, in general. So why noise, right? That's like something we didn't talk about very much at the workshop. I kind of uh, thought that a lot of people might have come with that particular kind of frame already. But in case you don't have it, uh, noise is useful for all sorts of interesting kinds of applications, especially when we want something that is kind of pseudo-organic in its presentation. Uh, anyone that's worked with touch for a little bit knows how much fun it is to use uh, noise sops, especially to kind of create all sorts of interesting displacement inside of their meshes. Uh, the only catch that we start to run into is how do we use noise as, in an efficient and kind of compelling way without having to wrangle some of the more challenging aspects of how expensive computationally it can be sometimes. So what we're going to look at over this next series of a few videos is how we might use noise, where we might use noise, and some techniques that we can use for actually making it work really fast, really efficiently for us. Uh, here specifically inside of touch, but we might be able to kind of think about that more generally in the way that we work uh, across platforms. The other thing we're going to pull apart here a little bit is we're not only going to look at how noise can kind of drive things like instances, that's what's happening down here in this particular example, but we're all going to also going to look at how we might drive vertex displacement. So we are actually going to dig into a little bit of kind of GLSL and look at how we might use that in an interesting and compelling way. And we're also going to think about how we can do some normal recalculation because while it's really slick to have something like this, right, that's just points that are displaced, we often also want to have some nice kind of beautiful shading that goes along with that. So there are several elements that we're going to have to kind of pull apart here a little bit and dig into to really understand how, why, and uh, the kind of mechanism for making all of these things work. But hopefully by the end of this, we'll have some solid examples kind of put together about ways that you might use noise, some kind of practical examples, as well as some more kind of theoretical underpinnings for how you could use that um, in a few different kinds of ways. Okay, so that's a little bit of a frame here to get us going, right? That's a little bit of the, the important pieces of what we're gonna do and where we're going with all this. So let's dig in just a little bit. now. I'm going to go ahead and close these windows here. If you're following along at home, there are a few resources that you might want to grab to get started. First and foremost, there is a lovely little website, um, a little landing page for this entire noise workshop. You can find it right here at the URL. I'll include it in the links, uh, especially on YouTube. This is an outline of what we talked about over the course of the day, um, kind of what we did, you know, kind of understanding what the trajectory of that particular workshop looked like. And most importantly is down here at the bottom, there is a link to the repo here on GitHub. So you can actually download this entire repo and play along as we go. Something to bear in mind in this whole process is that we're working in Touch Designer 099 uh, in the latest uh, release for this particular set of workshops and a set of exercises, uh, which is important because especially when we start to look at the GL piece of this, uh, some of the mechanisms that are GL associated have changed from 88 to 99. So if you're working in 88, all of these techniques will still work, um, but some of your syntax is going to be slightly different, especially in one of those examples. And I'll try and point that one out specifically. So those are some things to help us kind of get started here and frame us up before we dig in too deep. And so the first thing we're going to do, if you launch your network, and actually the one to start with would be this start toe. We're going to work mostly in here, kind of putting everything together uh, as we work. And then if you need a reference stock, right, this end toe is a lovely place to look for all the things that are working, or at least they should be working if you're using 099. Okay, so that's the kind of gist of it, right? When you open this up, you'll see day one, day two. We're going to go ahead and dig into day one. And before we even get started with any of the other fun stuff, the place we're going to start is actually going to take a moment and pull apart, you know, what exactly is noise? 
uh, and how can we understand that in a way that might be a little bit more conducive to having some productive kind of forward momentum with this besides kind of trusting that it's, it is this thing that happens somehow and is calculated in some way. Well, I don't know what that is. So let's start uh, by first kind of sussing out what exactly is noise and how can we better understand it so we can use it and exploit it in some interesting ways.